Hey, this is Donnie Smith and welcome to this lesson on spraying primers. In the last video in this series, we showed you how to mix up some epoxy primer. Now we're going to spray it on the car and then we're going to mix up some primer surfacer and apply that as well. First, before we uh, st start talking about spraying, I'd like to talk about some of the mistakes, the common mistakes that I see, you know, with spraying primers. And probably the biggest mistake I've seen out there is trying to put too much on, put it too wet, too many coats too soon. And that causes a lot of problems. Uh, a lot of the problems that you have in paint can come back to, you know, not enough flash time or putting it on too thick. That's why it's important to look at the technical data sheet and find out exactly what you're supposed to do. And there's a technical data information to uh, the epoxy and the primer surfacer at the end of this video for the shop line. Putting it on too thick, you know, it can cause a number of problems. But let's talk about one of the problems that can lead to. Have you ever seen dry dirt or mud that's dried and all the water's evaporated out of it and it's all cracked up? Well, you know, primers and paints, they can do the same thing. If you put it on too thick, too heavy, you know, it's going to dry and it, there's a possibility that some of these products can do that and it could, could actually crack on you and give you that crack look, just like dry mud. Another thing that can lead to is solvent popping. And what that is, is when you apply it on too wet, the outside surface is already kind of uh, dried and what's underneath can't es escape, can't evaporate. So you've got all those solvents underneath and everything's going to evaporate sooner or later. And what it does, instead of evaporating the way it should, it later, after that top film is, is, is dry, is it evaporates, but it makes a hole where that evaporates at. So there's like a tiny little pinhole in there. And sometimes those can be very deep, especially if it was the first coat of primer where this is escaping at. And so it's going to go through all that surface and, you know, have a uh, hole there. Another thing, if you put it on too thick, too many coats, too fast, you know, it could shrink on you. So you might have it sanded down, it looks good, you paint it and it looks good. But then a couple days later, even weeks later, that primer continues to shrink because it couldn't dry properly. And then you see repair mapping and sand scratch swelling of where you did your body work. All those could be eliminated if you'll just follow the technical data sheet and not put it on too thick. I know most of us are all the same. I mean, if a little bit does good, we always think more's better. I mean, I know I've tried vitamins and I'm, well, I can't really tell that to do anything. Let's try more. But just like with medications, vitamins, more is not necessarily better. And that's the case in uh, refinished products. So always read that technical data sheet and follow the recommendations because they're there for a reason. Now I know I mentioned allowing it to flash, the proper flash time. What does the technical data sheet say about that? Let me back up and tell you exactly what flash time is. Flash time is the amount of time it needs to dry between coats. So if you put a coat of primer surfacer down and it says allow to flash five minutes, you need to let that set for five minutes. Now that is not an absolute and let me tell you why. These technical data sheets are written in a lab, in a testing environment. It's usually 70 degrees. So when they do this, it dries five minutes to 70 degrees Fahrenheit and that's the, the amount of time it takes. Now like today, out here in my garage, it's very hot. It might not take that long. It's going, to in, it's going to decrease the amount of time it has to flash. And if it's really cold, it's 50, 60 degrees in your shop, well, you're going to increase that time quite a bit. So always take into account, you know, the temperature, that that's going to affect that as well. But that's a good starting point is to look at the technical data sheet. But remember that, you know, that's uh, at 70 degrees. So flash time is the time in between coats. Now the window is how long you have before you can recoat on top of that without having to sand. For, exa for example, epoxy has a real long window of 72 hours, the one I'm using anyway, most of them do. So you have three days to come back with your primer surfacer or whatever you're putting on top of that to spray it. And during that time, during those three days, you can spray right on top of the epoxy. It has a chemical bond, a chemical adhesion, but if it goes longer than the 72 hours or the three days, you're going to have to sand that, scuff it up lightly to give it a mechanical adhesion. So when following the steps in this video, we're going to spray the epoxy on, we're going to allow it to dry the recommended time, then we're going to come straight on top of it with the primer surfacer, and then we're going to allow it to dry. Then we're going to block it out and get it ready for paint. 
Again, if you want the specifics, the technical data information on epoxy and primer surfacer, at the end of this video, there will be some resources for you to, to uh, click there where you can get to those videos where I'll go over the entire technical data sheet for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we've got the primer mixed up, and the way this works, you have to buy this adapter that, that goes with it, with this system, and you just push this lid on here. And the nice thing about this is that when you're done, you just uh, take this off, you can throw the liner away, and then you just have your gun, gun to worry about cleaning. You don't have to keep a cup clean. What I'm going to do is wipe this down with wax and grease remover one more time. Making sure that you are working on a clean surface is, is an important part. Ensuring good adhesion and preventing problems like fish eyes and things like that. Okay, we'll let, let that flash off for a little bit and dry. And then, you know, just when you prime it, if you just have an old tack, tack rag, I wouldn't necessarily get a new one for it, but you can kind of just lightly go over it with the tack rag, make sure some of the dirt is off. And also with priming, you want to always make sure that you do wear a, an approved respirator for spraying. And you also want to be in, a, in an area like this, in a prep station or a paint booth. And that you uh, have your fans on. Okay, as you can see, we've got our first coat on and it's flashing off. Be sure and check your procedure pages to see what the flash time should be in between coats. And we're going to go ahead and put two coats of this epoxy primer on. The first coat, we went the full length of this. The second coat, we're going to come back a little bit and not go quite as far. And what that does is allows a, a thinner build to be here so that you don't have a hard uh, edge when you're trying to block sand this out. We've got the gun clean and out of the washer now. I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off a little bit. And now we can get ready to go ahead and put the primer surfacer. And for this particular job, we're going to use shop line JT, JP202, which is a primer surfacer. And what that is used to do is to fill the scratches and we block it out and make a nice smooth surface. So, uh, like I said, you always want to be sure and look over your procedure pages. Uh, if you notice on this, it shows that we put two coats on, so you want to wait at least 30 minutes before applying your uh, primer surfacer. And you have up to 72 hours, which is three days, to uh, go ahead and apply the surfacer. If you go uh, longer than three days or 72 hours, you'll have to scuff the surface to, to provide a, a uh, mechanical adhesion rather than the chemical adhesion. So we're going to mix up about the same amount. Look over here on 202. Uh, and depending on what uh, products you're using, wherever you buy the products, you know, be sure and ask for these procedure pages so that you can look at them and it tells you, you know, how many coats should be applied, the flash times, and things like that. So um, here it shows that uh, you mix it four to one, so it means four parts of uh, JP202. To, to one part catalyst, which is 301 for this application. So we're going to mix this 4 to 1. So you look on here, find the 4 to 1, and probably uh, we'll just go 2 and 2, two parts here to the catalyst. So. There's our primer surfacer, catalyst in. And it's always uh, a good idea to be sure to put these lids on immediately because moisture, this uh, catalyst is moisture sensitive and 
don't want that lid left open. Now, like I said, the epoxy primers are the one that takes the induction time. This is primer surfacer. There is no induction time as soon as it's mixed. You can pour and spray it. Put your lid on. And you want to be sure and always remember to put this ring on. Uh, it has been left off before, and without that, that lid's not going to stay on there. Now we're ready to apply our two coats of primer surface. Okay, as I mentioned, if we've waited at least 30 minutes and not no longer than 72 hours, we can just come in and we can spray right over that. Uh, you can tack it uh, if you want to, but uh, it is ready to spray. So we're pick up our paint gun, turn our fan on. Okay, I just had a problem. I don't know if you saw it on, on film, but we had a drop that dropped on the car and I stopped to see what the problem was. And what happened is I had the liner in here and this will happen if you're not careful. And uh, I popped this on when paying attention when I did. Can you focus in on that? I kind of caught the edge of that and pushed it in. And this got kind of pushed down in there just a little bit, which didn't make the seal. And then I put everything on, so make sure that this does stay on top here, and that's probably had I open the gun up and just put it back on top and make sure. This doesn't happen often, but every once in a while, if you're, if you're not paying attention, that will happen. So uh, that was a mistake that you uh, we can learn right here, trying to try to avoid that. Okay, I went ahead and got the first coat on. We'll let it dry for a little bit, and then we'll come back and put our second coat on. Now if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you may realize this, these videos I shot a long time ago. However, listening to your comments and your feedback, you really enjoyed this series of videos, but there was a lot of complaints about them because the audio wasn't too good, and uh, I tried to enhance that the best I could, and then plus I'm putting this intro and you know talking about some of the questions you had you know, in, in the beginning and ending of these videos, so hopefully that you found that useful. Another question I got a lot from this video from years ago is what kind, of rec uh, what kind of primer gun do I recommend? And there's a lot of good primer guns out there. You just need a 1.6 to 1.8 range. You know, it's a little bit bigger gun than what you're going to shoot base coat with. You know, base coat's going to be like 1.3 to 1.4. And for primer, I'd use 1.6 to 1.8. Uh, 3M makes some, some good primer guns. Um, this is a DeVelvis. They make some good ones. Me personally, I have started using 3M's AccuSpray primer gun. Some people really like it and some don't. I've heard good and bad about it. Me personally, I love the gun. It's true that you don't have to have, you know, the atomization quite as well as you do when you're shooting base coat or clear coat, but you still want a gun that can spray it really nice. For example, uh, you know, in this video, I showed you how to mask off and back mask. But, I mean, if you got a small spot in the fender, it's possible that you could just spray that fender and maybe not even mask. What you're going to do is you're going to turn your gun, you're going to fine tune it to a smaller pattern, and then you're going to prime just that area. You know, you're going to keep the repair area real small. And so, you know, you want a primer gun that's going to shoot good if you need to do that. And a lot of times that's what, you know, you may do rather than masking off the way we did in this video. But if you're a beginner, I would recommend going ahead and taking every precaution until you become comfortable enough to know, you know, what your limits are. You know, if you're unsure, go ahead and mask it off, drop a piece of plastic over the entire car, just like we did with this video, because it's always better to be safe than sorry, just to save a few minutes. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you go down below, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and be sure and tell others about this video. Thanks for watching, and remember, if something's worth doing, do your best and have a blast doing it. Hey, before you go anywhere, be sure and check out some of my other videos and playlists.